administrations left to negotiate with the Taliban, including uh, one of the commandos who was released from Guantanamo Bay as part of the Bo Bergdahl prisoner swap when President Biden was vice president. How does he feel about that? Does he have any regrets? And, and how is how's he digesting that? Well, first, I would note that um, one, I'd go point you to the Department of uh, the uh, Intelligence Community to assess the identity of the individual. I know there's been reporting on it, but that's not my position to do from here. I would also note that in prior uh, negotiations and commitments made during the Trump administration, there were thousands of individuals who were released. Um, so uh, our focus right now is on, again, not taking the Taliban's word for it. Uh, we are assessing, we are closely watching, and we are being very clear about the capacities and the capabilities we have at hand should they be needed. Of course, that's not our objective. Saki's pathetic attempt to cover for Biden's massive blunder in Afghanistan. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki scrambles trying to shift blame onto President Trump while dodging the actual question. The question about barbarians like this man who proclaimed, I was detained in Guantanamo Bay camp for several years. He, along with four others, known as the Gitmo Five, were labeled the hardest of the hardcore by U.S. intelligence officials. But that didn't stop Barack Obama and then Vice President Joe Biden from releasing all five from Guantanamo Bay in 2014. This man now sits inside the presidential palace in Kabul after he and his fellow Taliban insurgents took over the capital city on Sunday. So instead of answering the question about how this man now sits in a position to negotiate on behalf of the terrorists, Saki pivoted, dropping this bombshell. Can you offer any guarantee to the Americans and Afghan allies that if they remain there past the end of the month, U.S. troops will help them evacuate well, past think, the end of the month. Weisha, our, our focus right now is uh, on doing the work at hand and on the task at hand, and that is day by day. Wow. The answer should have been a swift and unequivocal yes. America leaves no one behind, but not with Team Biden. They're most likely looking for a way right to this moment to somehow pin this latest catastrophe on President Trump. Of course, President Trump wouldn't have let the rapid fall of Afghanistan happen on his watch. He's now slamming Team Biden and the administration's humiliating withdrawal from Afghanistan. It's a terrible time for our country. Uh, I don't think in all of the years our country has ever been so humiliated. I don't know, would you call it a military defeat or a psychological defeat? There's never been anything like what's happened here. It's, uh, you can go back to Jimmy Carter with the hostages. We all thought that was a great embarrassment, and we were pulled out of that by Ronald Reagan. This is uh, many, many times worse, and you're dealing with thousands and thousands of Americans and others that are stranded and very dangerously, really stranded in Afghanistan. So this has been the most humiliating period of time I've ever seen. Yeah, we had a great deal. We worked on it very hard. Mike Pompeo, a brilliant guy, and many others worked on it endlessly. Uh, meetings with the Taliban. Of course, you have to meet with the Taliban. They're the ones that you're negotiating with. I told them up front, I said, look, before we start, let me just tell you right now that if anything bad happens to Americans or anybody else, or if you ever come over to our land, we will hit you with a force that no country has ever been hit with before. Peace through strength. President Trump made it clear that the Taliban would face blistering repercussions for any and all acts of defiance. And now, under blundering Biden, these thugs have the upper hand, fearless in the face of a feckless administration. Joining me now, combat veteran, former Green Beret, and executive director of the Association of the United States Navy, Jason Beardsley. Jason, when you see what's going on, the fact that we have an administration that isn't actively working on getting every American home, this is gut-wrenching. This is hard to watch. For service members who put time in there, uh, we are tired of getting betrayed. We've been at aimless wars with feckless leadership from Congress, politicians, generals, the intelligence community, and even presidents, and we're paying the price for that. This weekend was a tragedy. Uh, our real hopes, our prayers need to be with the safety or for the safety of our men and women, American citizens, and our allies on the ground now. Uh, let's hope that they get something right out of this botched operation. Well, and the fact that we're talking about a refugee crisis, even before we get Americans home, world leaders are already talking about how many they're willing to take in. Macron saying they'll only take in a certain number. But there isn't an active strategy of getting Americans out. We see the pictures, of course, in the cargo planes where Afghans are being evacuated before Americans 
What is that like for military personnel to have to stand down to know that the Biden administration is not actively fighting for Americans? It's, it's awful. And I, I like your words, uh, active strategy. Uh, we've been without that for 20 years, two decades worth. When the military is tasked to do clear military objectives, soldiers, sailors, Marines, airmen, they can achieve those objectives. But when they're given ambiguity and they're left without clear active strategies, we have nothing but to wait for politicians to determine uh, what the next course is. And now we see other countries looking at this. China is licking their chops. They're going to walk into a situation that we left and take over from, from the United States all our blood and treasure in the natural uh, resources realm, rare earth minerals. This is a disaster on many fronts. And the military equipment, the fact that they're even getting this military equipment, and in the interview President Trump did yesterday, he talked about even the fact that we built these forts. Those should have been destroyed. Now they actually have all of our equipment, all of our technology. That's in the hands of the enemy because we just have no idea what we're doing or I don't even know what they're thinking they're doing anymore. They don't even know what they're doing. So when you mentioned the technology, it's very important that people understand what that actually means, too, is some of the biometric equipment that we use to take fingerprints, uh, eye scans, and things like this on the ground were used over the last dozen years or more, and now those are in the hands of the enemy, so they can quickly identify if they know how to use the equipment who worked with the United States. That's an open season uh, sort of hunting game. We have failed on a lot of accounts here. The military equipment is just one of them, but the bigger subset is the lack of creativity from our politicians and generals in the last two decades. What is it with the current military establishment, even the defense secretary, they honestly sound like they have no idea what they're doing. What was the plan here? Why was there no contingency plan? Or if there was, it was just, we're just gonna run away from everything. I think it's a, a large part to do with the civilian oversight has not pressed the way they need to for a, a new case or casting of the AUMF, that's the authorized use of military force. We've been living under the same one for years and no one has held generals accountable. There needs to be people resigning or fired and it should have been happening at every stage of this conflict. Look, we don't need to host generals inevitably just because they're in power. We ought to be looking for them to achieve objectives. And when they're telling us for two decades they can't win the war, that it'll be a generational war, that's an indication that they might need to move on and let's find someone who thinks we might be able to win. I'll give you some E4s and E5s, some sergeants in the military who will tell you how to win this fight. That's the thing. They did not want to end this war. They were against President Trump putting forward a plan. They get military contracts out of it. They like the narrative, the war, the endless wars. They're warmongers, really. And the fact that finally they did this to give PR to Biden, that they'd be out by 9-11, then it was going to be August 31st. This was simply to make Biden look like he was the one who actually ended it. And instead, he's going to be known forever as the one who botched it. Yeah, this one wears uh, very difficult for anybody that has to sit through this. And let's let's be clear here. Um, pulling out was not uh, the problem here. It's the way we did it. The sequence, uh, removing the military first, taking our military assets out of the region, and then leaving our embassy, our diplomats, American citizens to, to, to fend for themselves on the ground against the Taliban. That's a thing that the military knows how to do well. We can protect uh, a non-combatant evacuation plan. We can do that, but we never let the generals actually execute what would be an, an appropriate military disposition. And now we're staring at an uneasy next few weeks, months. We don't know how long this will go. We don't know when it's going to end because it doesn't seem like they have a plan for it to end. They didn't even talk to world leaders for several days. There's no leadership here going on. It's just reactionary leadership, if you can even call it that. Thank you for your service to our country. Every veteran out there, anyone who's in active service still, the fact that they're going to be bearing the brunt of this because of bad leadership, it's just it should have never happened. This was preventable. And that's what makes it so disgusting to see images like this. This is not the America we know. It's not, but let's give credit where it's due. Our service members stood up honorably and they answered the call when the country calls for them. Uh, make sure this one sits at the doorstep of Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. Exactly. We pray for them. We pray for their safety. God bless you and we'll talk to you soon.